And investors are bracing for next week's crucial Brexit vote and the potential fallout if Prime Minister Theresa May is dealt a defeat. Wilf, you have been all over the story, and I know you're heading back to the U.K. next week. What options are in front of the government in terms of this, uh, this massive deal that the voters wanted, but they were split? It was close. Well, there's still a lot of moving parts. Uh, the government's focused on one particular thing, which is getting uh, the vote through Parliament on Tuesday. But just this past week has already been fairly brutal for Prime Minister Theresa May, losing a number of smaller amendment votes on her Brexit bill, all of which have continued to suggest she has a very tough job getting her full deal approved when it's voted on next Tuesday. But before that, we'll get an important decision from the European Court of Justice on whether the UK can itself decide to reverse Brexit or whether they would require the EU 27's unanimous permission. That decision on Monday could embolden Remainers to vote against May's compromise middle ground Brexit. In fact, earlier this week, the European Advocate General published an opinion suggesting that the court may well give that ruling that Remainers want. So much so, JP Morgan increased the probability of no Brexit at all from 20% to 40%. Anyway, on Tuesday, if Theresa May loses her vote, everything is on the table from a no-deal hard Brexit to a second refer referendum and from a new prime minister to a general election. Many, many moving parts. Let's uh, discuss what it all means for markets. Stephen Whiting, Global Chief Investment Strategist at City Private Bank. Uh, Stephen, thanks for, for joining us. Thank What's you your take, it. first of all, uh, as to the, the likelihood of whether Theresa May gets this deal through Parliament? Well, the poll data uh, of different PMs has suggested that she does not have enough votes. Uh, markets are not uh, under the assumption that this vote will go through. So a big question mark becomes sort of how uh, severe would a loss be uh, and what that might imply. Uh, if it's very severe or if it's close and if there's a chance then for the EU to amend if they see that it's very possible to get uh, get through on a second vote. But you just laid it out. Uh, this is an incredibly complicated, uh, almost absurd level uh, uh, flowchart of different possibilities. Uh, and we should be extraordinarily careful about uh, thinking that we can uh, handicap one particular outcome when there are so many different possibilities. As you say, Stephen, already the expectation is that it's going to be tough to get this through uh, Parliament. Does, does that mean if she does lose the vote that the market is uh, already priced in a large part of that and, and therefore the, 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 the risk of the biggest move is to the upside if she does get the deal through? Well, that's indeed right. It would be a surprise to get this vote through uh, if it does indeed occur even. Uh, on Tuesday, and if it came through and uh, was accepted, uh, that would be uh, a fairly big surprise. I think you could see that implied volatility in the, the British pound uh, is fairly high. The currency has been on the weak side. Uh, it is not, again, the shock of the initial Brexit vote uh, in 2016, which was pr priced in uh, as a much more severe surprise. Uh, but nonetheless, there is some bracing here and some avoidance of the whole issue uh, priced in the markets, and it would be a surprise, a larger surprise if it were to pass. M Mike, we've been so focused on lots of domestic U.S. issues, or trade issues as well, international issues, but things that specifically affect the U.S. Do you think that this is a sort of underwatched risk factor because of the implications it can have, not, not just for the rest of the EU, but, but for banks and, and companies with exposure there? I think it's underwatched in a conscious way by investors, but I do think that you have to attribute some of the extreme weakness in even U.S. bank stocks to a little bit of concern. I think investors are kind of throwing Brexit on the pile of things that they feel like they should be worried about without really focusing in on exactly, you know, the, the kind of implications and, and what the, the knock-on effects are going to be on these various different scenarios. Oh, so I do think there's a possibility. But what's the concern now? Is the concern now that Brexit doesn't happen at all, that Brexit happens without a deal with Europe does the, and, and then leaves well, the UK just suffering in the wind? No, I think what, what's been interesting in the last week or two is that the chances of her getting this deal through Parliament have continued to decrease if we look at all the sort of tea leaves out there. But interestingly, that hasn't been universally bad for the British pound because at the same time, the chance in that eventuality of a second referendum has risen slightly and, and clearly no deal hard Brexit would be bad for risk assets whereas a second referendum if it then went the way of Remain would be slightly better but in the short term I still think that the likely reaction to her vote failing in Parliament if that's what happened is to the downside the question is uh, how much more because a lot's priced in already. Stephen, just quickly, finally, Wilford, risk yeah. across Europe in general on political sides, is it, is it under, under watch by U.S. investors? 
Well, I think uh, the attention has got to be on these amazing list of different uh, political and policy problems that just have markets completely in thrall. When I think about, for example, uh, risk of uh, problems with the Italian budget not coming to a proper agreement uh, with the wider EU, I think of that as relatively small compared to these issues between China and the United States. The fact that the Federal Reserve uh, and the ECB, in fact, on the 13th, the head of the Federal Reserve meeting on the 19th, has a very, very uh, hard road uh, to walk at this time. That we have all of this on top of us at once. And no surprise uh, that, you know, actual engagement of long-term investors at the moment, while uh, markets are just uh, enthralled to all this, uh, is going to create and, and sustain this level of volatility in the near term.